So our dye job is finished. Get a, got this going on right here. We're gonna, we also went ahead and stitched in uh, this little back flap, little back strap here, because that's what's gonna hold down our leg strap. And before we do, oh, and also I went ahead and just did this quick little decorative stitching there. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about before we get going on to the next part, I think I've learned something. Uh, this is the first time I've used water stain with uh, a bit of tooling on the piece. And I think that's why my, uh, the dye on the tooling didn't quite match up the way I anticipated it to. See, normally when you put in dye with this kind of tooling, the dye should pool into those crevices and be darker, and then everything on the top should be lighter. And it didn't work this time, and I was really confused as to why that was, and I realized I've never used the water stain on anything with this amount of tooling. I've always done something like a gel antique or some echo flow and those kinds of things. So I think that's kind of a word of warning um, for you guys. If you decide to do this project, um, maybe not use the water stain with this kind of tooling. Try to use some of the look into those other options you may have oils again gel antique or the echo flow brand of stains okay but what we're going to do is set our snaps for this back area so this thing can close up and around the belt we're going to use line 24 snaps for this piece uh, just because they're going to be a bit more heavy duty and for what we or using it for we need something that's really gonna uh, be strong and keep from you know snapping off while we're in the middle of the game and running around with this so what we have here is this anvil uh, it has several different setters for it in this case we're gonna be using this last one here for the line 24 and your snaps basically come in four pieces you've got your cap You've got your female end that's going to go into the cap. And then you've got the flat end post where the male end goes over that. So to set this in, we're going to set these aside just for a second. These extra ones. And grab just what we need. So you want to do this on your marble uh, or some kind of uh, anvil you know, you, you have because you want that extra resistance. So I want to look at my piece here, make sure I'm going to be choosing the right direction for everything. So that way when I put this in, I don't want to, you know, mess up and realize, oh, I didn't do this right. You know, we want to see what's going to look the best here. So I have to remember this is my exposed side. So I think what I'm going to want to do is set my cap here to be facing out. Okay. Looks good. So now we're going to set this in. Let's kind of fold this out here. And essentially, we're going to set that cap into our anvil there. Make sure it's lined up. And we have this little driver here. And it's got a little nib at the end that we're going to put on that post. And I'm just going to take, let's zoom out a little bit here for you. Oh, that is the wrong way to zoom. Okay. And I'm just going to strike this. And, you can, and I'm going to make sure to rotate my driver around. Test it, good. 
I want to make sure that this doesn't really spin all that much. Good. Okay, so you can see we've got that set in. Now the other side, we don't need the, the anvil here anymore for this side. Make sure, so basically we're going post to post. So this post is gonna face this post. spinning all right good and tight and that should reach over and snap in all right that's perfect that's what we want so this is what's going to be facing the outside when we slit our gun in so it's just a good little finishing touch I know not exactly a period and all that kind of fun stuff, but for this case, I like it and I'm going to roll with it. <laughs> uh, there's other pistol, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, pistol designs that <clears throat> are, you know, not in the same category as far as this, what I'm doing here and the way they fold over, you know, they fold over and into kind of a strap that straps everything down. It's a very much more traditional holster design. I'm sure you can look those up. Find something that suits you. Either this design or find one of those. side so this to me is getting to be the fun part bringing all this stuff together because it means we're almost done so let's test it out Got our belt here, and this is just gonna end up sliding through. Bring it around. That's good. All right. So you can see there how this thing is gonna snap in, and then our gun will sit in right there. Woo! All right, <clears throat> so that's one bit of hardware. Set this to the side. And then our last bit of hardware. Setting in our buckle. And I've got these little these little ramekins of all the various uh, pieces of hardware I have for studs. And we're just gonna do a really quick uh, snap rivet for this. It's a piece that's not gonna be seen very much. So I'm fine with the, having a snap rivet uh, in it. So like always, we're gonna feed this through. Now this is a <clears throat> center bar buckle which means I didn't need any kind of loop. You know, normally you have a kind of a belt loop here that's on attached to the belt. So that way when you feed this through, it's gonna hold the tongue down. Well, this is a center bar, so this back bar here is actually gonna be what's gonna hold that down. So that's gonna do it for us. We didn't have to do any extra pieces. All right. So I'm just gonna choose a snap rivet here. So for snap rivets, 
you want to make sure you get something that's going to go through, you know, stick out on the other side, but not be this huge, sorry, that one looks a little weird. Um, I don't like the look of this one. <laughs> that seems weird, I know. Um, as I was saying, you want it to go all the way through the to both sides, but you don't want a huge amount of the post sticking out. You just want a bit of it poking out on the other side. So it's just a little bit there, not a huge amount. Because you're trying to make sure that you know if it's if it's too much, it's gonna be too much. You have to to squish to get this whole thing together, and it's gonna look kind of weird. So if it's just enough to get you know the two pieces together, and you you're gonna compress the the snap rivet or the yeah the snap rivet together, that's what you want. So I've just got this little driver here has got a little concave piece so that way when I put it against the cap here actually I'm gonna put it on this side it's gonna make sure the cap stays domed while the underside is gonna flatten out since it is against this thing here I'm actually gonna grab since it's a little awkward so this is a little three pound mini anvil I have uh, I sometimes use it to as be as a paperweight when I'm when I'm tooling. If I need a, I guess a leather weight <laughs> uh, to hold the leather down to keep it from shifting around. But it's also good for these situations where I need to kind of hang this off the side. There we go. All right, our snap rivet. It's set, which means it is ready to be, you know, it's just going to basically go through this, through this here. We're going to go around. This will go over, or sorry, uh, around my thigh. Just like that. That makes it look like my thigh is super small, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and that's getting there. So the last thing we have to do is stitch this thing together and an entire piece will be done. So I'm gonna, we already showed you how to do uh, the cross stitch and I guess saddle stitching, I think I believe it's called. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go off camera, stitch the rest of this. The only thing we're really stitching, we're worried about. Um, let me snap this off. The only thing that's actually being stitched together is this line right through here. Let's see if I can get a close up of that. There's a line right through here that's going to stitch there and along the back. And the rest of it is just decorative stitching. So really simple, just in and out, and just make it look nice. We want it to look like a big cohesive piece, basically. And I might, you know, I'll probably end up going back over it with uh, some of that edge paint as well, just to kind of again make it look like um, a part of the belt, like it's all one piece. Okay, so once that we'll we'll be back once all that's done. 